there is such a high expectation of China and U.S. coming together, uh, joining hands together with the rest of the world to uh, uh, overcome this uh, serious uh, threat to mankind. Should uh, America, a hegemonistic power, uh, appear to be on, in some kind of decline, it would have to be caused by its own mistakes, like a strategic overstretch. When the uh, Chinese uh, uh, President uh, Xi Jinping spoke uh, at the Davos agenda in his uh, special address, he, he said that humanity endured multiple crises really seen in human history. And he also said that there is no doubt that humanity will prevail over the virus and emerge even stronger from the disaster. All countries in the world should join hands in fighting pandemic. And the, it has been disappointing that uh, over the past years, we haven't seen the kind of unity uh, that uh, uh, was uh, demonstrated uh, when we entered the first 21st century during the fight against uh, terrorism, for example, and the fight uh, uh, against the uh, financial crisis. That is why uh, I think uh, there's uh, so much attention given to the relationship between China and U.S. There's uh, no denying. I think uh, we cannot underestimate the, the serious uh, damage the China-U.S. relationship has endured uh, over the past years. And it's a challenge for both sides to find the right way forward. My observation is that the current uh, new U.S. administration needs time to es estimate what are the areas it, can, uh, it has to cooperate with China and what are the areas uh, it needs to, to manage with China avoiding uh, conflicts. And uh, for the Chinese side, I think uh, we also need to reflect and observe uh, what is the intention, what is the next move uh, by the United States. And uh, how China and U.S. define their relationship is important, not only for the two countries, but also uh, to the world. I noticed that the new White House spokesperson, uh, Jane Psaki, uh, said in uh, one of his statements to the effect that uh, strategic uh, competition with China is a defining future of the 21st century. Admittedly, there are elements of, of competition in our economic relationship, but I think the competition should be fair and for the purpose of a common progress. That's the kind of competition which uh, exists in, the re in any relationship. But the concept of uh, strategic competition, I, I think it, it won't find uh, much agreement uh, here in China. China's uh, fundamental view for the 21st century is to maintain peace and cooperation peace and stability. China has no intention of vying for world dominance. You don't hear people here in China advocating for uh, competing with the United States for world dominance. It just doesn't exist. The future world trend, from our point of view, is more likely to be multipolarization rather than hegemonistic replacement by the unbridled and the chaotic policy measures that was coming out of Washington over the past years. I'm curious too to see what's next. Most people expect that there can be some kind, some rational and uh, professional approach and sensible policies. On the part of China, uh, there has been some uh, positive signals uh, in his congratulatory uh, telegram to President Joe Biden, which was sent on November the 25th, 2020, Chinese President Xi Jinping said that promoting healthy and stable development of China's U.S. relations not only serves the fundamental interests of the people of both countries, but also meets the common expectation of the international community. In addition, the Chinese Consular and Foreign Minister Wang Yi has proposed that the two sides work out working lists on areas of cooperation, areas of dialogues, 
and issues that need to be properly handled. You ask about cooperation. Uh, I think uh, many of you mentioned that uh, United Global Response to COVID-19 is the most pressing task for the world today. And I think China, US, and together with the other countries, we should encourage health experts and uh, scientists to uh, maximize their role and to uh, intensify research to help fight the virus. We also need to cooperate on vaccine development and the distribution, as was mentioned. And we should also coordinate policies on such issues as cross-border traveling, on global uh, norms uh, on, uh, regarding the measures, the efforts we're taking against the pandemic. Furthermore, discussion and cooperation on global issues such as climate change also needs to be resumed, and the American return to the Paris Agreement is a welcoming step. There is also the need for cooperation in the newly emerging areas like AI, uh, like 5G. Uh, I think some of the Chinese companies have been successful, and that seemed to have sparkle, sparked a fear in the US, which I think is entirely unnecessary. Instead, I think there is a need for joining hands between China, US, and other countries to develop the norms uh, governing the application of AI technologies, which is uh, in urgent need. Uh, this year marks the 50th anniversary of uh, uh, Dr. Kissinger's visit to China. And for half a century, China has uh, successfully integrated into the world economy, uh, at the same time maintained its own political in integrity. Asia has uh, uh, been able to maintain, every country maintain their political integrity at the same time, have a wide uh, economic and, and cultural context. So we disagree with the decoupling. I think as long as we have this uh, uh, spirit of uh, mutual respect, respecting that there is a boundary for political system, and then uh, uh, respecting the fact that each system, this each culture can succeed in its own way, if with that kind of spirit, I'm sure that we can have a both. Generally speaking, I think the world problems are complex, and China's approach is to uphold multilateralism and develop a community with a shared future for mankind. Thank you.